Jerry E. Merritt serves as a senior vice president and community development manager at the Bank of Nevada. Her banking career spans over 39 years. Jerry's responsibilities include development and coordination of all community developments and acts as a liaison with state and local agencies, nonprofit development groups, and other participants in the community, and economic development programs and projects. Working to strengthen existing clients' relationships and build strong community partnerships. Jerry has been recognized for her skill for leadership, stellar performance, and undeniable contributions to the financial area. A champion of the education, she served on the UNLV School of Medicine Community Advisory Board and as a mentor for the Clark County School District Reclaim Your Future program. She has also served as a distinctive district president of Financial Women International. With the spirit of excellence, she currently lends her experience and expertise to the Board of Urban Chambers of Commerce as the chair of the Board of the Directors. The Lynx Incorporated, Coalition of the 100 Black Women, Valley Hospital Medical Center, Help of Southern Nevada, American Business Women Association, Workforce Connections, and Trustee Board for their Champions Center Church. No stranger to the community she loves, Ms. Merritt is the past president for the Rape Crisis Center, Hannah Brown Community Development Center, and is passionately involved with numerous philanthropic and civic organizations. Merritt has been awarded the Women of Distinction Award by the NAWBO and was featured as an interesting personality in the inaugural edition of Who's Who in Black Las Vegas and chosen as a woman to watch in 2016 by Vegas Incorporated. She's been married for 47 years and has one son. Now, we now have some students from Nevada Help Desk uh, that are really have some burning questions. Thank you, Cameron, for that wonderful introduction of Ms. Jerry. We want to say welcome on behalf of Nevada Help Desk. You are family, you are home, and you are amongst some young adults that are interested and learning about money and just financial literacy. So I'm so excited about today. So we're gonna, without further ado, jump right in. And uh, first, any opening remarks from you, Ms. Jerry? Oh, thank you so much for having me. This is such a wonderful opportunity, first of all, to be able to share my experience with all of you. So I am so looking forward to your questions and hopefully I can give you some very valuable answers that you can walk with not only today, but that you may be able to use in your life going forward. One of the students who couldn't be here, one of our Las Vegas Academy students, because they're working on a play production, had a burning question about like college and, and should we take out student loans? He sent me the price on how much it costs for annual tuition. I had never seen that amount um, before. And his options were, he had scholarships, he had some, but he was like, for him in his mind was, oh, let me do student loans. So if he does not have enough scholarships to uh, offset the cost of tuition, would you recommend taking out loans for college education? And that's his question. Well, you know, that question can be a very challenging one. Uh, right now, if you look at the news, there is a lot of conversation around student loans and around student loans uh, where we feel that the government may uh, need to forgive some of the student loans. So since the beginning of education and since the program for student loans started, students that have been successful in their careers, whether they're doctors or lawyers or if they're going into performing art, have always taken out student loans. The only thing that I would caution a student that's having to take uh, from the student loan program is just make sure that you're only taking those loans that apply just to the amount of funds that you need. Quite often, students will take student loans in dollar amounts that are available to them, and they use these dollars for, for living expenses that are far beyond the lifestyle that they've lived in before they went to college. So that makes a huge increase in the amount of student loans that you will spend years and years paying off after you are out of college. So 
I would suggest if there is no other um, finances for your college, yes, student loans are not a bad way of actually financing your education. You just need to be very careful. And when you're taking out these loans, that they're only meant for the education part of what you need at the time. Thank you. I'm in a different uh, banking. It's Yada. I have like, a, I think it's a 0 0.05. But again, like, you know, the interest rates are really small right now. Do you know of anywhere else that has like, I don't know, like anything higher than that? You know, un unfortunately not. And that's what I was just kind of trying to say just a few minutes ago, because right. of the times that we're in, okay, when the interest rate is very low in the bank on your money, the interest rate is also lower when it actually comes to mortgages. You can yeah. actually get a mortgage loan right now, you know, anywhere from 2% 2, 2 up to 35 and those are great mortgage rates to lock in for the next 30 years. But the downside of it is that financial institutions, because they're not taking in a great amount of money from the mortgages and other products, they cannot afford to pay uh, more interest on your money. So the rates that you just quoted, unless you're speaking of $100,000 or more, where you can negotiate a rate, is about the amount that you will now earn on a savings or uh, a money market. Right. Okay. Thank you. I just wanted to make it's, sure I wasn't it's like kind missing of, out. It's kind of the chicken and the egg. You know, one yeah. half doesn't know the other. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And for the young man who's looking uh, at going into real estate, okay, or purchased in a home, this is a whole different conversation. Because if you're get taken out of mortgage right now, now is the time to do it with the 2% interest rate. But if you're looking to make money on your money, interest rates are very low. What are your opinion on cryptocurrencies? It's coming, okay? Uh, it's like... Um, Anything else that have to do with technology, I can remember uh, many years ago saying, I'm not having a cell phone or a computer, okay? And look where we are today. So when it comes to cryptocurrency, I feel the same way. It is very much going to be a part of how we do business in the future. We want to say thank you once again, Ms. Jerry, for being our special guest for April, the money lady, as we call it, <laughs> National Financial Literacy. Uh, just really, I know that's, what is it, World Financial Literacy Day that's uh, celebrated this month. And so this month's magazine is going to focus on money. We're going to be talking about money. And I know that you will educate our audience, our viewers, our listeners, because now the digital video magazine, you can watch it and read it and hear it. So it will come to life. So thank you. Thank you. You're so, so welcome. And my parting statement would be, when it comes to money, the most important part beside earning it is actually managing it. Mm -hmm. The success of being able to purchase anything that you would like to buy have to do with how you manage your money. Money is so important to all aspects of our lives. So why let your money manage you instead of you managing it? So if there's nothing else you learn during this month of financial literacy, as we're actually talking about money, I think it would be learning how you manage your money is very important.